Living in the 21st century, we're all used to a pretty advanced medical industry that continues to provide us with answers to some of the most challenging illnesses. Got a fever? Take some paracetamol. Think you've got pneumonia? Don't worry, you can be treated with penicillin. Discovered by accident by Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming in 1928, penicillin went on to become a miracle drug. But does the story of penicillin end purely with Alexander Fleming alone, or are we missing anyone else? In 1938, Howard Florey and Ernst Chain found Fleming's article on penicillin and realised this could be revolutionary. So, as World War II began, the two tried to get funding from the British government to research and manufacture penicillin, only getting around £25. So, they began growing penicillin wherever they could, using hundreds of hospital bedpans and old milk bottles, until finally they had enough to test it on one volunteer, Albert Alexander, a 43-year-old policeman. And lo and behold, the penicillin worked and Alexander began to recover until eventually the penicillin ran out after five days. Desperate to keep their patient alive, Flory and Chain even extracted penicillin from the man's urine and reused it. But despite their best efforts, Alexander soon passed away. However, Flory and Chain had proved that the penicillin worked and wasn't harmful to the patient. The big question they face now was how to make enough of it. World War II came to their rescue. Penicillin was needed, and quickly. Flory went to America and met with the US government who agreed to pay several big chemical companies to make millions of gallons of it. And by the end of World War II, there was over 2.3 million doses ready, enough to treat all the wounded Allied forces on D-Day. In the end, Flory and Chain were able to advance Fleming's initial first steps of discovering penicillin, and ultimately, it was due to their perseverance that the treatment of diseases was completely transformed.